Miami has found a way around its traffic trouble by going underground. Traffic finally is flowing through the Port of Miami tunnel under Biscayne Bay. The $1 billion tunnel was actually dedicated back in May, but its official opening was delayed because of repairs. Now, this opening marks the end of more than 30 years of planning and construction on a project expected to ease traffic congestion through downtown Miami by diverting port traffic. Natasha Gonaim has the story. This is the headache inducing sound of a complex construction project just before completion. The roar of machines cutting grooves into asphalt to ensure that millions of wheels have traction. We're 120 feet below Biscayne Bay in the new Port of Miami tunnel. The county, cruise ship industry, and port officials consider its almost mile long tubes vital to their future to get people and cargo on board faster. With this tunnel, its hope drivers won't be stuck in paralyzing traffic, forced to navigate congested downtown streets to make it portside. Despite the project's billion dollar price tag, people won't be paying tolls, largely because the tunnel is funded through a public private partnership. It's a relatively new concept for American infrastructure projects, the first for Miami and one of just a few around the country. In this case, a private company built the tunnel, and over the next 30 years, Miami-Dade County will pay the company a total of $300 million to operate and maintain the structure. The payments are set in time so that a lot of times when, when a government uh, builds something, the, for some reason, the operating and maintenance costs start to escalate and escalate and escalate. In this case, we already know that. We know, we know, it, uh, we know our costs after 30 years. The county is already considering the same type of arrangement to fund water and sewage treatment projects to the tune of $13 billion. Down in the tunnel, builders say they're ready for anything. They've applied lessons learned from other tunnels and their mishaps. This concrete structure isn't just for show. When there's a Category 3 hurricane barreling towards Miami, 50-ton gates will slam down, seal off the tunnel, and prevent it from flooding. Engineers say they're not only ready for floods, they're ready for fires. So if there was a fire in this area, immediately the water would come down, extinguish the fire, or suffocate the fire. The jet fans can be reversed, the speed can be controlled, so we can both push the smoke and pull the smoke. So with its 44 jet fans, 91 surveillance cameras, and steel gates, the Port of Miami tunnel is being touted as the safest in the world. And now it's open for business. Natasha Ganame, El Jazeera, Miami Dade County. The Port Miami Tunnel is expected to inject some much needed business and economic opportunities into Florida's economy. The question is whether it will deliver as expected. Here to give his insight on that is Pete Dilatore, the host of the Pete Dilatore Business Show, a live daily radio show focusing on economic development and business opportunities in South Florida. This man speaks to my heart. Uh, Pete, good to see you. What kind of business opportunities are born of a tunnel like this? Well, being the first of its kind in Miami, we're going to go through a first-time experience here. But the, the importance and the outlook is that this going, is going to significantly influence the, the, the economic development and future of Miami-Dade County. And it's going to, it's going to really influence uh, international trade, which is strong at the moment right now, but it's going to take it to a whole different level. And, and this really affects all of the industries that we have now that are booming, whether it's real estate, the financial district, uh, like I said, exporting, importing. It's going to, we believe, uh, with everything going on right now, and, and in fact, we're in the middle of a, of a uh, infrastructure boom here yeah. in Miami-Dade County. This is going to be a big part of it. And that's 30 years in the planning. I mean, it's not like somebody figured this out yesterday, but, but Miami-Dade County, uh, about 16% of the, the, the economy is based on international trade. This is a big deal. So this is an example of thinking ahead. People get bogged down, though, by costs of inter infrastructure and delays. In the end, do you think this will have been worth it? I, I personally, I believe so, and I have uh, many colleagues here in the, in the business community that feel the same. And again, it, it is it's something that was, uh, should have happened years ago, but it happens when it's supposed to happen. And we believe that right now is the right time with everything going on. When you, when you also uh, put that together with the port dredging, getting ready for the uh, expansion of the Panama Canal, right. uh, Canal next year, this is all going to come together and is coming together at the right time. Right, because the expansion of the Panama Canal, it's the East Coast uh, 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 ports that are going to gain the most. So this wasn't going to be optional. It's kind of good that this is finally open, uh, because if you want those big ships in there, that means a lot more goods and, and better infrastructure needed to, to move, the, move them around. 
without a doubt, this is something that was long in coming, and, and, and when you look at everything happening here, it's the right time, and I think we're ready and excited about what's going to happen as a result of all of this. Now, sometimes people, I mean, obviously, uh, this kind of industry employs a lot of people, and those people will feel the benefits of it, but uh, it's hard to convince people you're spending this much on this kind of infrastructure product, uh, project. What were the arguments in favor of who would gain, and what were the concerns about who would lose as a result of this tunnel? Well, again, it, there's, always a, there's always a concern, number one, of the cost of anything that goes up. And, and uh, we've had some recent issues with the Miami Marlins Stadium and how that came about and the monies that were put in there. But I think this is something that is overall going to be a very positive impact. And you're always going to have the naysayers that look at this and can say, well, $1 billion could have gone to this project or that project. But I think in all, you, you need to have a vision of what is, is happening, not only happening now, but what can transpire as a result of this type of infrastructure in place which, as, as, as you alluded to, it's one of a kind. No kidding. Pete De La Torre, good to have you on the show. Hope you come back again. Uh, Pete is the host of the Pete De La Torre Business Hour.